Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Well, the thumbnail says it all really today, doesn't it? By the time you watch this video, I will no longer own this Seiko SKX009. I only bought this watch in December and here I am early February flipping it. What's going on? I mean, everybody loves the Seiko SKX and I mean everybody. This guy loves the Seiko SKX, this guy loves the Seiko SKX and even this guy, no, actually, he said it was a piece of, well, you can imagine, can't you? No great surprises there anyway. So what's my problem with the 009? Well, to be honest, my heart belongs to another. Let's flip the camera and get into it. Controversial then, could I be the only person on the planet that doesn't adore the Seiko SKX 009? What are we going to do today then? Well, in spite of the fact that I've only had this watch for the last two months, it has appeared mostly in a cameo capacity in not one, not two, but three videos so far. It appeared in my State of the Collection video just before Christmas, it went head to head with the new Phoebus Wavemaster last month, and it appeared in a video last week as a size comparison for the Seiko SNK 809. So by way of a send off, I thought I'd do a little mini review today, all the usual good stuff, dimensions and specifications, loom shot, wrist shot, movement accuracy report, etc. And I thought I'd do a little Uncle Seiko strap fashion show. Larry from Uncle Seiko has been generous enough to supply me with not one but three 22mm options, all of which fit the SKX. I have got the waffle here, the Tropic brand new rubber strap and one of his very interesting beads of rice bracelet. Get it off that Jubilee and see how it looks on a more substantial strap offering. And I'll also tell you which watch has captured my heart at the expense of the 009. So 42 and a half mil diameter, 22 mil lug width, 13 and a half mil thick, a rather compact 46 mil lug to lug, meaning this one wears a lot smaller than those dimensions suggest, tapering down to 18 at the clasp, and it's a 20 mil clasp. The key dimension today though for me is 137 grams for this one. I'll get back to that a little later on. 316L stainless steel case and bracelet, 60 click unidirectional rotating dive style bezel, Flat as a pancake, Hardlex crystal. Now, not sapphire, Hardlex. If you're a regular viewer here, you know that I moan a little bit about Hardlex. It's not the same as sapphire, it will scratch. We have got Seiko's insane Lumi Bright. I'll pop up a loom shot early. I mean, that's just bonkers, and that's taken in my bathroom at midday, so it's not even in total blackout conditions. Movement in this one is a bit old fashioned. It's the 7S26, a 3K low beat movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour. 38 hour power reserve, stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40, and a day date complication on the dial there at the three o'clock. Now I'll pop up an accuracy report when I realized I was flipping this one, I stuck it in the winder just to confirm what I'd always suspected. This one runs a little bit slow, just about minus 15 there. I did an accuracy check with it back in December when it came in and it was running that same minus 15. Again, with intolerances for the 7S26, but not the best one I've seen on the channel for review so far. 200 meters water resistance and it is divers 200 meters water resistance which means more rigorous testing than just a standard 200 meters water resistance. We've got an aluminium bezel insert there, a little bit shiny, a little bit cheesy looking by my standards I must admit but a lot of people buy this Pepsi style 009 just for that bezel so perhaps I'm on my own here as well. Screw down crown there at the four o'clock, but it's not all that easy to get a grip on and operate, if we're being honest. Now these SKX Jubilee bracelets are a bit of a polarizer. People tend to either love them or hate them. Reasonably finished, kind of satinized on the outer links, polished on the three mid links. Uh, 22 mil at the lug as mentioned, tapering down to 18 and a 20 mil Seiko clasp. But the clasp is just pressed. It's not all that flash, a little bit of flexibility in the clasp and a massive amount of flexibility in that Jubilee. And this is a brand new watch. It's not like it's been on my wrist for 20 years, hence the flex. Now, some people can't stand it. They do tend to rattle a lot. They do make a bit of noise and they wear quite loose on the wrist. But the flip side of that is that they're very, very comfortable. I must admit, I started out as a skeptic, but I became a bit of a lover of this Jubilee. I haven't really played around with this one all that much since I bought it. In fact, I don't think I've had it off this strap at all. 
and hollow end links too, not all that flash at $200 really, is it? Nice enough case back though, the Seiko Tsunami Wave, bit of a signature on their dive range. This one has evolved over the years. Just some basic printing there with the movement detailing and so on. And there it is sitting on my seven inch wrist and it looks pretty good, does it not? This one generally, because of those shorter lugs, the 46 mil lugs, generally perceived to wear well, even if you've got, say, six and a half inch wrist, maybe even slightly shorter, as long as you don't mind a quite a top heavy, large style dive watch on your wrist. And I guess that's my problem with this 009. It is a bit big and it is a bit top heavy, especially compared to its little brother, the SKX-013, for it is this smaller 38.5mm version of the SKX that has captured my heart, and it is this little watch that is the long-term keeper in my personal collection. All the same strengths and all the same weaknesses really as its big brother. It's got the same basic non-hacking, non-hand winding movement and the same rattly jubilee and hard lex crystal. But this one weighs in at only 117 grams, so 20 grams less, a reasonable proportion of weight to save and it doesn't feel nearly as top heavy as its big brother. The little rattly jubilee makes much more sense on a watch like this, I think, which is smaller and weighs less. So sorry Seiko SKX009, it really isn't personal. I think you're a fantastic watch and would highly recommend you to anyone looking for an iconic dive watch for less than $200. But you're not for me, I much prefer your little brother due to the slightly lighter weight and more compact size on the wrist. But don't cry, I'm sure your new owner will love you and I'm gonna do a wee Uncle Seiko strap fashion show as a bit of a send off. Starting with this excellent waffle strap. Now the Seiko SKX began production in 1996. If you wanna take the look back another 20 years, then perhaps this waffle strap is the one for you. This is a Mark II Uncle Seiko waffle. Uh, they're a little bit softer and more compliant than the Mark I's were. No need to dunk them in a tub of boiling water to bend them into shape prior to first use, but still nicely durable. Not cheap at 40 bucks, but you've got a little covert Uncle Seiko branding on the underside of the tang buckle there, which is a nice touch as well. Another retro style strap offering that's definitely making a bit of a comeback at the moment is the Tropic strap and this is another one of Uncle Seiko's Tropics. Again, $39.99, very long gradual taper to the nose and just a single fastener, but pretty good looking. This one a little bit stiffer, definitely gonna take a little bit more breaking in. Or if you wanna keep it on a bracelet but ditch the stock rattly jubilee, why not look at this beads of rice? Now these ones, the beads, the mid links are actually reversible. So either polished or brushed, I've gone for the kind of stealthy brush look, but you can flip them over to replicate the original finish of the Jubilee. This one, very nice indeed. Adds weight to the watch, adds about 20 grams. The watch comes in now at 157 grams, mostly because of a really nice milled clasp there with the Larry's Uncle Seiko logo on the, the fold over. So bye bye SKX009. It's been brief, but it's been real. Perhaps our paths will cross again in the future. You never know, never say never again, but you're just not the right SKX for me at this present time. Now, what am I gonna spend the proceeds on? The channel is called Just One More Watch after all. So there you have it, the Seiko SKX009. Really nice watch, perhaps I'll own a 007 again in the future, but for now my heart belongs to the 013. I just think it's a nicer watch for me, a little bit smaller, wears a little better. I'm looking forward to modifying it over the next couple of months. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.